Welcome in today's video. I'm just another Chris and uh, this one goes out to Dave Knopp over at Knopp Top. Uh, you were asking about how I turn my instant photography into digital. So today I'm going to walk you through the steps on how I scan my images. But disclaimer, this is not technically the correct way of doing it. It's just a way of doing it. There's a way better way. How many times am I going to say way in this video? I don't know. I guess as many times as it takes. But I've been doing it this particular style for the past year or so. But there's a much more efficient and professional way of doing it. That I'm going to show you how to do in a later video in the future. But since you're just probably wanting to get your feet wet and started it doing it, this is how I have been doing it and it works pretty well. So you've been warned there's a better way and I'll show you in the future but you've been warned. But not only will I show you how to do that, I am gonna show you the back end, the post-production of it and getting them posted over on the gram and Facebook, other social media sites. So sit back, enjoy, there's some good stuff and good info coming your way. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. So I have three images here. I've got an Instax a square, Instax wide, and a Polaroid picture. And I'm gonna take these, scan them in, and show you my process and workflow on getting them in the computer, edit it up, and post it online. So the first thing I do is try to wipe off any sort of dust or grime on the pictures. Then I take a cloth and wipe down the scanner. Now, no matter what it seems, you're gonna have some dust spots, which are super easy to clean up and I'll get to you in just a second. Now, this is where the incorrect way of doing this comes into play. You typically don't wanna put your images directly on the glass and scan them because you can get some little artifacting uh, between, you know, from the pressure of the picture on the glass. But I'll get into that in another video. You don't need to worry about it right now. Once I lay them out so I'll place a piece of paper over the top of them because for some reason on my scanner it tends to chop the images off if I just try to scan them in without it so I mean I try to use a colored piece of paper it just seems to work out a little bit better but so that's what I do and then from there I open up Photoshop for each and every one of them I try not to edit my pictures in any way other than just getting it to what it looks like if you're holding it in your hands, especially if you have a crappy scanner like I do. So I can only do so much. Now, once it's in there, you may notice it's crooked, it's sideways. Yeah, you gotta manually straighten these out. So what I do is I bring down my guideline and I manually straighten these out. So I find an acre point, which is just the top of the image and I try to eyeball it to where it's straight as possible. Then I cut the picture out, now it's straight. So if I need to get rid of any dust or scratches, things like that, that I don't want to leave in the image, and I'll use the heel brush, which uh, helps get rid of all of those issues. If you don't know what any of these terms mean or what the brushes are, don't worry about it. I'm not getting that technical in this video. If you want to know why, leave a comment below. Maybe I can make a video for you or I can just answer your questions for you. So leave a comment if you wanna know that. Now this is where it's optional, but I tend to like to see the texture of the borders in my images. But if you're uploading to Instagram, um, you can't really see it. So I tend to skip over that step because the image is so small, you're not gonna be able to see it, especially on the white border pictures. If you're doing it on a black border, then you can definitely see it. Sometimes if I'm using colored borders, I can, I can get away with it as well. But on the white borders, it's you kind of forget about it. So to do that, what I like to do is kind of do it backwards. I will highlight the image itself and then I'll tweak the image and make it to where it looks like if it was in person. And then I'll right click and select inverse. And then I kind of tweak it from there, like lower the brightness maybe slightly, lower the contrast. Uh, if you want to take it into an extra step, bring it into uh, Lightroom and then crank up the clarity and texture and then re-export it out that way it works really well but that is you know your preference that's pretty much it so it's not a lot of steps it's just really tedious especially if you are you know trying to scan in 15 or 20 images at a time it can get really annoying but now once I go into saving this is what I do if I'm just selecting one image then I will you know crop it down to size file save as whatever I was using it for uh, let's say a PNG or a JPEG save it out 
and there you go. I, I can upload it now however I want. Typically on Instagram, what I like to do is something a little bit different than most people do. It's not an original idea. There's a lot of people that do do it, but you don't see it too often. And so I like to make my Instagram a little bit different than everybody else's. I like to post three pictures a day. And when I do that, I try to make them similar to each image, if that makes sense, like the background. So they kind of mesh together uh, into one set. Now I have gone pretty advanced in the past where I've combined laying pictures, the instant film, with digital film, uh, like I did with my Stranger Things set. I did a review of the Stranger Things one step uh, Polaroid camera and uh, I what I did was I took a nice digital picture of the Polaroid camera and then I added in the images to you know kind of as some fun little layout on Instagram. But typically I do the three bar system. I mean, it's just what I kind of call it. It's like a little little bar of three images and I try to make ones kind of match up to the next one. It's a little fun, it's a little bit different, but it's really up to your preference. There's a quick and dirty way of doing it, which I still love and still do it, uh, where you blow up the image and then you blur it slightly or leave it as is. I tend to leave it as is and then lay the picture again over the top of it to give it a little bit of fun contrast from the background. So it's not just here's a Polaroid picture. It looks pretty cool as you can see there. But if you want to follow my Instagram, there's a link in the description as well. So this isn't like the proper way of doing things. When I was getting into instant photography, I didn't really go out and just dive in and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on it. I worked my way up. My first camera was this one right here. Then I worked my way up a little farther and now I'm really into it so I can justify buying a better scanner. But I recommend you guys doing the same thing, especially if you're just getting started. Try it out, see if you like it. Don't go in and spend hundreds of dollars if, on something that you may not even enjoy doing or you just kind of like to do it casually. But the scanner I'm using is just an actual like all-in-one printer scanner not fancy and in fact i have to do a lot of post-production work on making it a lot better as far as getting it back to the original appearance such as saturation and brightness but the reason i'm talking about this printer is i paid like 20 30 bucks for it gosh like 10 plus years ago and it works and it does the job just fine. I use a lot of the scans in this book that I am coming out with very soon, so more on that later. But as you can see here, this is an eight by 10 book and I have and I have them laid out, like blown up larger than the original size of them and they're great, they're fine. So the whole moral of me showing you this is because the scanner that you have, if you have one or printer, it's probably gonna work just fine to at least get started. Now, if you're gonna scan these on the higher end or blow them up really large, like uh, on poster size, yeah, you're gonna wanna get a nice high-end professional scanner, but you can still produce, you know, stuff like this, make your own zines and books with a cheap scanner. Now, the benefits of having a nice, really high-end photo scanner is uh, in some of these images you can see scan lines throughout the image and that is because the scanner doesn't uh, progress at an even pace there's a little spots where it jitters across the uh, plane meaning it's just crappy motors inside the, the you know the scanner and so you get these weird little lines that you can fix it kind of in post but you're never going to get it perfect and especially if you're taking an image with a uh, dark background or just at night, uh, you're you're gonna see it. If you're scanning an image of your outside, super bright colors and things, you're not really gonna notice it too much. And the other aspect of having it is you can scan it at a much higher resolution. Those are really the only two reasons to get the a photo scanner, like a really nice one. And if I can find uh, a link to the model that I have, which I doubt I'll be able to do that because it's a really old scanner, I'll leave a link below for you to grab one for yourself. I won't leave any other links to other scanners because I've never used them. And I don't want to just reference stuff to you guys that I haven't tried myself because I like to really work with some stuff before I push it onto you guys. So just so you know. So the pictures that I chose for this demonstration are actually from a project that I am working on, two of them actually. These two right here are for a book I'm working on that hopefully will be out later this year, probably towards the end of the year, maybe in the fall. And it is a book about my town that I've grown up in. I've been working on it for the past, I don't know, six, eight months or so. And then this one is actually from another series that I'm doing, it uh, won't be up for years from now. Um, who knows when that will be. But I wanted to cover like, like pop culture Americana. So like, 
comic book shops, toy shops from around the country, and maybe some fun locations that are like pop culture related. And this was a toy store that I went to in New Jersey. It was literally a hole in the wall. That is the entrance. Just on, it was weird. It was just on the side of a building. You we went in, you had to go up these crazy stairs, and this there was this comic book shop. It's just really interesting. So I want to at least share a little bit about that and stuff that you guys can look forward to and maybe pick up for yourself in the future. You know, if you're into that kind of thing. Now that is just the way I like to do it. There are many other ways and there are some ways that I will be sharing with you some other tips and tricks for scanning your images, such as with your phone, as well as some other fun scanning quick hack tricks that I will be sharing too. So consider subscribing if you would want to know more about that. So what do you guys think? Am I doing this completely wrong? Are you doing it differently? Let me know in the comments. I would love to chat and learn from you guys as well, because that's really what this whole page is about, it's community driven. So you guys, thank you so much for watching. I've got a lot more fun videos coming your way, as well as behind the scenes of creating my documentary. That's gonna be over on the community side here on YouTube, as well as Patreon. So if you wanna check that out too, there's a link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and yeah, get out there, make some art, and be sure to scan it in. I want to see it.